Hi, it's Rob again, and uh, what I'd like to do today um, is to show you <coughs> how to make a, a honeycomb filter for your uh, for your telescopic sight. And uh, here's one I've made recently. I don't know if you can see that. If you're looking dead on, of course you can see through it. If I turn it off axis. You can't, and that's the whole idea, because uh, you don't want uh, whoever you're, or whatever you're, I should say, <laughs> it's politically in incorrect to uh, aim at people with uh, your telescopic sight. Um, let's say whatever you're aiming at, <clears throat> so your target, um, or your uh, prey, let's say, um, doesn't want to, uh, or you're, you don't want it to be uh, shocked by seeing the reflection of your uh, sight, of your uh, tele telescopic sight. So uh, this is why <coughs> people fit these uh, honeycomb filters uh, to. Uh, what's this? Is a sunshade of uh, a 50 millimeter objective uh, telescopic sight, and. Um, so, if it's slightly off, um, there is no chance whatsoever of light reflecting through it and uh, uh, frightening your prey. <clears throat> so, how did I make it? Well, I'm lucky that you're hanging around because uh, that's what I'd just like to show you. Coming up soon. Here we go. <clears throat> what you need to start off with, uh, I found very useful to start with the sunshade. This is one which has a screw front, <coughs> I presume because you can add other filters to it. Um, and what I've done is uh, taken a. Does that fit? Yes, it does. So let's move that to one side. This is the sunshade. <coughs> this is black sticky tape. Um, these two are. Uh, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Let's do it like this. That's better, isn't it? Yes. These two are uh, fabric black sticky tape. Uh, the good thing is <coughs> they stick very well. Um, the bad thing is, uh, on the other side, they are white, and <clears throat> the downside of that being white is this white line. If you make it larger than the uh, than the web filter or the um, honeycomb filter, so <coughs> the trick I want to use here is to take, guess what, black straws, and these are really black straws for cocktails and whatnot, um, I was lucky to get for only uh, four Swiss francs, what's that, uh, about four dollars or just less, maybe four dollars ten or twenty, uh, something like two hundred or four hundred, four hundred I think, um, of these <clears throat> of these things. And what we're going to do is, here's some I uh, uh, used already to make that one, and <coughs> we're going to use the telescopic sight um, sunshade to keep them in shape. And what I'm going to do is make sure that they're tight enough by inserting uh, extra straws um, because it really does matter if the, uh, the fit is nice and tight. Okay, so <coughs> that's beginning to look a lot better. Um, so you need, I don't know, about 50 or 60 of these uh, straws um, for each of the uh, uh, 
for each of the uh, sunshades you want to uh, do this to, uh, depending on the diameter of course. <coughs> and um, so <coughs> at some stage you need to tamp them all down to be uh, a good diameter. So um, I think we can do this probably the other way up so that these all wind up being the same length at this end. Then when my uh, delightful assistant arrives <coughs> what we're going to do is to put some of this black tape around them and um, then we'll see exactly uh, how that looks. I think probably I need to add another one. <coughs> and then once this is all taped, I'm going to take this knife and cut them off at a particular length. Um, the length I used before was this, <coughs> so about 40 millimeters, or three quarters of an inch, I think. Uh, something like that, yeah. And I've got this uh, corrugated, no, serrated, uh, kitchen knife. This one happens to be made by Victorinox, the people who make the Swiss Army knife. Uh, and it is extremely sharp. These ones are quite new, as you can see by the super edge. <coughs> I found that uh, a serrated edge does a better job of cutting. So, um, <coughs> uh, I think without much further ado, um, I will uh, move to the next section as soon as my delightful assistant is here. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I was waiting for my attractive assistant to arrive, and here she is. Uh, it's Danielle. Say hello, Danielle. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you can't see me. <laughs> so, and what, I'm, what we're going to do is use <coughs> some of this black tape. Um, which I showed earlier. Um, as you can see I've uh, prepared this so that all these uh, black straws, black plastic straws, are stuffed into this uh, sunshade and they're all <coughs> flush at this end. I did that by pressing them down onto a surface, a flat surface. And now we're going to run some black tape around it um, keeping slightly away from the edge and I think for a first run that's probably enough. Let's cut it off and turn it round or we'll turn it over, round. Yep. And what we're going to do is pull this Right round and then this one also over the top of the other one, nice and tight. There we go. And I think I'm going to do another one, slightly overlapping it <coughs> here so that we have a certain length. I think the length is important. Too short, I think, would provide too little protection. Perfect, thank you. Um, from reflections. So that's why I'm keeping it to about at least um, three quarters of an inch, when not an inch. I think that's probably good enough. <coughs> and now we're going to take the sharp kitchen knife and the cutting board, which I have conveniently hidden, and uh, cut down here. Um, it's an angle you can't see, so I'm going to come over this side <coughs> and 
we'll see what that uh, what that does. So, like I say, it's a ser serrated kitchen knife, which is quite sharp, and um, I found that uh, serrations are important because these. Uh, straws are rather resistant otherwise. So it's making a terrible sound. Um, but <coughs> there we go, we've got, let me just remove the previous set of straws from the sunshade and to stop them all spreading all over the table and hold them on with a rubber band. It <coughs> doesn't matter that some are longer than the others uh, because, of course, we always will cut them off to the right length. Let's see how this goes. So I'm hoping that will do the trick and keep all of these things together. And so now we have our uh, honeycomb filter. Not quite round, but it doesn't matter because once you put it in to the sunshade, um, we end up with rather a nice finish. And either you can keep it like that, which I might, but I might well do. Um, and uh, you can see that if it's off axis. Uh, you can't see through it, but if it's on axis like this, lo and behold, there we have light passing through the sunshade. Okay, so uh, that was a very simple and quick and cheap and dirty trick how to make a uh, honeycomb filter for your telescopic sight. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, stick around, there'll be more. I think I uh didn't really give you a, a, a close enough look at this uh, 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 honey comb filter and uh, so um, just letting you uh, see a little better uh, how it looks <coughs> um, as you can see it's really uh, quite honeycomb like let's uh, show you all the way through and of course the angle you would be looking at through the uh, lens would be like this, through the uh, telescopic sight would be like that. Um, I think possibly it would be better to have the um, <coughs> filter all the way down to the bottom uh, of the uh, sunshade. In fact I will do that right now um, just using this uh, tape as you can see, just pushing it down inside. Um, the reason for doing this is that um, ah, it's a little tighter than I expected. Why is that? Ah, because I need to go down a diameter. Um, maybe this will fit. No. <laughs> Okay, I have to take this ring off. <coughs> um, yeah, probably it's better to have this closer to the lens so that any possible uh, effects are minimized. And there we go, something like that. So, let's take that out. <coughs> so here we can see the lens uh, the filter, rather, is right at the bottom of the uh, sunshade. Let's put this ring back on. And there we go. And there's no white edge, as uh, we could see with my first attempt. That's this one. Let's put it by the side. Uh, you can see the white edge around the edge. <laughs> uh, where else would an edge be? Um, uh, and that's due to the kind of tape I used. This time, of course, 
uh, instead of using the cloth based uh, tape which is white on the inside I used insulating tape which is black all the way through this is uh, PVC in insulating tape and therefore um, we've got a much better finish no white things showing through and uh, indeed guess what it's honeycomb like and of course you would expect that because when you pack circles um, together they form this uh, hexadecimal well, hexadecimal uh, hexagonal um, you know, showing you my uh, computing roots uh, they show you this uh, hexagonal uh, pattern because of the packing density, the packing uh, factor um, how these circles fit together and um, actually it would not, in my view, it would not harm to increase the packing density um, here we've got tiny little interstitial spaces between the circles and uh, if you increase the number of um, straws that should theoretically uh, squeeze those little interstitial spaces down to uh, almost nothing <coughs> and become a perfect honeycomb so uh, because the the, the uh, straws in themselves let me show you one the straws in themselves here's one are in fact elastic. There you go. See, it's squashing. So I can squash it not only in two dimensions, uh, yes, in two dimensions I can squash it, so I can make it uh, not just round or uh, ellipsoid. I can actually squeeze it between these two fingers and make some kind of funny square thing. Um, <coughs> or a hexagonal shape. So, um, this was my uh, cheap trick, 400 drinking straws for $4, um, and I don't even need, uh, well I use about 50 I would guess, or 50 or 60, something like that, uh, this is about the right diameter, <coughs> but of course I don't use the whole length of the straw, the straw is uh, somewhat longer and I can make several of these. Uh, something like three or four uh, from one uh, bunch of straws. So here we go. That was uh, how to make a very simple and inexpensive honeycomb filter for your tele telescopic sights uh, to avoid frightening your prey uh, through sun reflections on the lens. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, as usual, um, press like if you liked what you saw, um, subscribe if you'd like to see um, other uh, projects or mini projects which I'm doing, and um, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging around, thanks, bye.